So today we're going to talk about our second remote digital project, which is going to be an optical illusion weaving project. All right, so I've created this document for you in your Google Classroom. So if you go to your classwork tab, it's called project number four, if you are a seventh or eighth grader, and if you're a sixth grader, it's project number three, and it's called the optical illusion weaving. And if you look, I created a Google drawing for you, just like with our digital mosaic project that you will edit yourself, all right? So here's my copy. And the first thing that you're going to need to do today is you're going to need to come up with a background. Now, you can be super creative with this. Um, unlike our mosaic, we can actually use things other than a shape, but I'm gonna show you each of the things that you can do first. So here's the first thing that you can do. You can go up to shape and you could insert a rectangle. So that's the first thing that you can do. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna insert a rectangle. And then if you want it to be really boring, which please don't do this, I recommend that you don't, you could just choose a color, okay? You could choose any color you want as your background. I really recommend you don't do that because then it's not gonna be very interesting, okay? The other thing you could do is select a gradient like we did on our mosaic background. And you could just select a preset one, which once again, I don't really recommend, or you could create a custom one, all right? So remember with a custom one, however many stops you have or these boxes is how many colors you're gonna have. So I'm actually gonna add three more stops so that I can create kind of a really cool um, gradient. So I'm gonna show you how you could even make like a rainbow. So I'm gonna add this stop right here. I'm gonna do orange, then I'm gonna do yellow, green, spread them out just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add one more stop right there. I'm gonna make that one blue. I'm gonna make this one purple. So look, you could even go as far as to make like a rainbow. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? All right, so that's the first thing that you could do. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this. The second thing you could do is you could insert a picture. So I went to Google and I typed in tie-dye background and you could come up with a cool photo that you want to use for your background. I think this one's pretty cool. So I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it into my picture. Now, remember, kind of like when we did our mosaics, if you have a really um, fuzzy picture, you don't want to do that. Oh, and I'm glad it that did this because this is a great example. This has what's called a watermark on it. A watermark is what companies or people use so that you can't steal their image and use it. So do you see these little cameras and these little logos? It's called a watermark. So we want to find a photo that does not have a watermark on it because that would not work very well for what we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to try this one instead. And you want to not leave it this size. You need to make sure that you have it so it fits your entire document. So do not leave it like this. Reshape it to fit your entire document. All right, so that's another thing you could do is you could insert a picture for your background. You can insert one picture. Or say um, that you would like to create a collage. And I'm gonna show you what that means. So let's say I'm going to, um, So let's say I'm gonna make a collage of different flowers. All right, so um, I could just search out different pictures of flowers and I could insert them and create kind of a collage of flowers. So I'm gonna just insert a bunch of different pictures and I'm gonna resize them. And then I'm gonna choose another flower picture. And this isn't what I would do, but I'm just kind of doing this to show you. And I'm gonna insert another one. And I'm adding a lot of different photos to create a collage for my background. All right, so those are the three options you have. You can create a gradient, a custom gradient. You can insert one photo as your background, or you can create a collage for your background. So you kind of have a lot of options here for what you're going to do for your background, okay? So spend a little bit of time, figure out what you're gonna do for your background today. Okay, so now that we have our background, you're going to insert a shape. So I'm gonna go up to the shape icon right here at the top. I'm going to insert a rectangle. And I need to change the fill. So I'm going to go up to the paint bucket right here. 
I'm going to select gradient and I'm going to select custom. Now we talked about this with the background. These are called stops. I'm going to make each stop solid black. Okay, so your entire square looks black. And then I'm going to add three more stops. One, two, three. Now you want one stop to be directly in the middle. That already is. I'm going to make that transparent. Then you want another stop to be directly in the middle of the center and the, uh, the outside and the center and the outside. So I'm going to make these other two transparent as well. So it should look like this. It should be directly white in the middle with black on the edges. And the last thing that you need to do is you need to change your angle. So I'm going to change my angle to 180. There we go. And I'm going to click OK. So now you can see if no matter where I move it, your background shows through your box. OK. So now we need to kind of duplicate this box and we need to be able to change the direction that it's going. So I'm going to move my box over to the edge and I'm going to copy and paste it. Okay, so now I have another one. If you see this little circle right here on the edge, if you grab it and drag it, do you see how it turns? Okay, right now we are at zero degrees. I need you to turn it until it says 270. Do you see how that says 270? And then let go, okay? Then you're gonna drag your rectangle so it sits right in the middle of this uh, horizontal rectangle. Now, you can tell when it's exactly centered because you will have this red line appear. Do you see that red line? Okay, then you know that it's directly in the middle and you stop, okay? Now, before I go ahead and duplicate these, I'm going to select each one and I'm going to change the border. So the border color is black, but I'm going to change it to three point thickness. Can you tell the difference between the two now? So I'm going to select this one too and I'm going to change the border to three point thickness. Okay, then I'm going to click on my vertical rectangle and I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm also going to select the other one. Now I've selected both. All right, so now we can copy and paste both of them at the same time. So I'm going to line them up. And remember, you do that by lining up the red line. And now you have both, and then I'm going to paste that one more time. And I know that it goes off the screen, but then it should look like that. Okay, so it, it will go off, but then you have an entire row done. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to select the whole row. So I'm going to click the first one, and I'm going to hold shift, select the second one, select the next one, and so on while holding shift the whole time. So now I have the whole row selected, okay? And now I'm going to center it, which means I want it in the middle of my paper. So do you see how I dragged it until it, that red line appeared? And then you stop. So now that I know that that's in the center, okay? So now I'm gonna copy and paste the entire row again. So I'm gonna hold shift, select the whole row, copy and paste. Now this is kind of like when we did our other off art drawing where we had to kind of line them up, but you don't want it directly below. You want it staggered, meaning we're gonna create this, this square shape in the middle. And you'll be able to tell if you have a perfect square or not, okay? You can kind of tell um, like right here if you have a perfect square or not. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of played around with it a little bit and I pulled it over so that the side was lined up exactly. So this outline or border of the outside of my project is directly in the center of this rectangle. So I lined it up with this one so that I could just see and make sure that these are perfect squares and what we're gonna call these as the negative space. Okay, so I'm gonna deselect that because now I need to add another one over here. So I need to move this one over to the other side. So I'm gonna move that on over. You can just see, I can, use that, I can use that red line as a guide to know exactly where it needs to go. Okay, and I can delete this one from this end. So now we have two rows and we kind of need just to keep going, right? So I'm going to select them all again. So remember, click the first one, hold down shift, keep selecting, copy and paste. And then you're going to do the last row, okay? So you're going to try and put it in the center again. So I'm going to use this side as a guide once again.
All right. And now you should have your three rows and you can kind of see how it's creating a, a weaving already. So you have your three rows there. If you have any extra shapes on the end, you can delete them, but I kind of use this sideline as a guideline to make sure that they're lined up. You also just want to make sure that all your negative spaces look exactly like squares wherever they are. So as you can see, we still have some to fill up at the top. We still have some to fill up at the bottom, but we are going to um, do that tomorrow. And then we're also going to do the last step. Okay. So this is all you need to complete for today. Reminder, the entire thing is going to be due on Friday, but this is as far as you need to get today. So don't worry about working ahead and I will have another video for you on your next remote day.